when one is drawing with compressed charcoal you're dealing with something which has the ability to stick very very easily to paper so subsequently um, it's often the case that drawings can be quite heavy in their execution and if you take the weight of your hand onto the paper so that your, your compressed charcoal is resting just above the paper then the compressed charcoal is, is capable of a much more delicate mark. I've sharpened the end of my compressed charcoal with a knife. A knife's better because you can change the angle of the blade to suit the thing that you're drawing. If anything, when I'm working with compressed charcoal, I'm kind of underdrawing. I'm not trying to establish the big tones straight away because it's very difficult to erase. So it's much better to be a little bit more careful and cautious with the drawing. So once again, I'm starting uh, not with sight size drawing or um, any kind of measure drawing. I'm simply beginning by thinking about shapes. And once I've established one shape, what I can begin to do is I can begin to use that shape. So if I'm happy with this triangular form in the back, if I'm happy with that proportion and that shape, and I'm really trying to think about you know, the length in relationship to the height. So here I'm kind of measuring the height against the width and seeing that it fits within a sort of square format. What I can now start to do is I can use this measurement to calculate other measurements within the model. So for instance, if I take that measurement on the model and move that across by one, I find out that that's where the edge of the chest wall is. So in a sense, what I'm now starting to construct is a proportionally measured drawing. This isn't drawn the size that I can see the model. This is a larger scale to the model. So what I'm doing in terms of my measurement is I'm comparing a, a, an element of the figure against the figure and then I'm using that same kind of unit of measure in my drawing. So for instance, if I'm then trying to calculate the size of the thigh, if I go back to that one measurement and bring that measurement down by one, that starts to tell me where the edge of that hip is. If I bring that measurement down by one, two, so one, two, that starts to tell me where the edge of his knee is. I'm trying to calculate this leg. Again, I can now measure something that I've drawn. So for instance, here I'm measuring this distance between the back, the back and the sort of sternum, bringing that across by one. And that's telling me that vertically below that point, that, that sort of angle is his knee. So again, I'm making comparisons of the figure against the figure and the drawing against the drawing. When I travel long distances in the drawing, it's always that point where I can mismeasure and misconstrue. So it's important to reflect on comparisons. If I'm trying to work out where something is, I'm looking at what's above it. So if I've already drawn that and I feel that I've established those measurements accurately, then I can establish where the next measurement is. Negative space is still really important. 
relating one part to another again still really important so it's building on what we've learned but with a slight, slight difference in that sense that if one began by establishing the height of the figure in relationship to the width of the figure I might begin to realise then that this distance taken through three times will ultimately give me where the edge of my model's foot is Again, one thinks about the fact that visually I might be really close to this foot. So it's going to be visually bigger than this part of the body, which is much further away from it. Of course, that distance is one that's really easily misconstrued. So again, I'm going to check it. Realising there, I think I've gone too far. But again, if I establish the drawing quite lightly to begin with, then it won't matter too much in the drawing if I've got it wrong. It's only when I'm more concrete with my decision that I can infirm up the drawing. Again, obviously the space surrounding the figure, as we've reiterated on a number of occasions, is vitally important and that will also help you. Understand how the figure operates in space. So once we've established the basic measurements, we can then start thinking about the tone. And with compressed charcoal, as I've already suggested, one can draw quite lightly but one can also use compressed charcoal with water. So compressed charcoal is crushed charcoal mixed with gum arabic. Gum arabic being the binding material that's inside watercolour and gouache. So with the combination of water you can achieve much more subtle tones than you would establish with compressed charcoal on its own. Once you've made the surface of the drawing wet, you make the surface more receptive to the charcoal. So you can begin to draw into areas and create darker washes. One can then pick up those washes and work back into the drawing. Obviously if one's working as in this instance with quite a lightweight cartridge paper you don't want to work the surface of the drawing too much because the paper will start to crumple 
I'm already starting to see in a few places the surface of the paper coming up. But it can be a really lovely kind of combination of dry media and wet media and give you an interesting set of marks. Also, it's a much more economic way of drawing because you're not spending loads of time filling in areas of tone with hatching. Normal willow charcoal doesn't behave as well in wash media. So it can be, you know, quite a nice addition to your drawing repertoire. Now that I feel that I've started to understand the broader range of tones, I can then start to work up the drawing with much fuller strength and conviction. But all the time I'm sort of thinking about looking at the figure, not just drawing what I think the figure looks like but really thinking all the time about the marks that I'm making and how they respond to the need. Of course that figure isn't just uh, an isolated figure in a nothing space, you know, that surrounding space has a tonal value as well and one needs to think about that. As we've mentioned, I think in a, another film, you know, do be mindful of focus. What do you want the eye to see in the drawing? What's important and what is not so important? So whilst there might be a lot of things happening in that background, there might be lots of details of students in the space, easels, drawing boards, etc. Does that add to the story, as it were, of the drawing? Does it add to the information and the communication? If you do go a bit overboard with your wash, obviously it's water soluble, so you can work back into elements of your drawing just with plain water. And picking out those details that you need, again, just think about what's, what's your eye noticing about the figure, what's the key ingredients of the figure. 